Hey guys, welcome back. Before we get to looking at our custom gameplay effect execute, we need to talk about damage formula math. The damage formula in our game determines how our character stats, equipment stats, and abilities translate into damage done. Here's some examples of partial damage formulas from other games. In World of Warcraft, we have a weapon damage formula here where they take weapon damage plus attack power and divide it by 3.5 times normalized weapon speed times a coefficient times a damage multiplier. Multiplication with percentages is very common in damage formulas. Star Wars The Old Republic is a bit different here. It looks like they have a minimum and a maximum, and I'm guessing there's some kind of like random roll between the two, but you can see they take an amount modifier percent plus one. It's very common to add plus one because basically, let's say that your modifier percent was 30%, right? You don't want to actually multiply something by 0.3. You want to multiply it by 1.3, right? So itself plus 0.3 more, right? And then they multiply by the main uh, hand minimum uh, times another amount modifier percent, another offhand minimum 0.3 plus another coefficient, and they go through like that. Genshin Impact is actually really similar to what we're going to be using, where it's just a set of multipliers that you multiply by each other, right? You have some kind of base damage, and then you have a base damage multiplier. You uh, might have, you might in some cases have a, you know, additive base damage bonus, which is added, but most of the time it's damage bonus multiplier times defense times resistance times amplifying multiplier, right? You're just times in by things and all of the um, equipment and character stats, they kind of just add up to make up these things that you multiply together. We'll go through some math on one of these a little bit later. Uh, I pulled the damage formula here for Diablo 4. It looks like it's different, but it's really, if you if you look at it, you realize it's really just the same thing as what they've got here with Genshin. They're just kind of writing it a little bit different. You're, you're summing up things, and then you're multiplying them together, right? And I'm guessing there at the end there that CSC and CSD is probably something, uh, I'm thinking crit rate, something to do with crit rate and crit damage. Maybe not. I didn't, I didn't look to see what those were. But, um, but that's, that's some examples of some partial damage formulas from other games. Let's talk about some of the elements and, and why this is important, because this is really important for your game. Again, because if you have the wrong kind of damage formula, then the strategy is going to be way off. It's just not going to make any sense. So if you've been playing role-playing games that are stat-based for a while, you're probably familiar with the concept of diminishing returns. But for those who aren't, diminishing returns describe a behavior where for each additional point increase of a specific stat, you get less damage output than the previous point increase. This is important because it encourages players to use a balanced set of stats rather than putting all the resources into a single stat. Imagine that you have a game where you have five or six different stats that players can pick from to try to figure out, you know, where they want to where they want to allocate their points, where they want to to make investments into. But your game design is in a way that they really should just throw all of it into one. That, that, that's not fun, right? Um, what's the point if all you if it doesn't matter where you put them, or one of them is just so much better than everything else? And so one of the ways that uh, game developers plan for this is through the concept of diminishing returns. So in graph form, let's take a look here at what that might look like. So this first one here is a linear formula. And so what that means is that if we, on our x-axis at the bottom, if we have um, whatever the stat is, let's just call it attack power, and our y-axis becomes the damage, for every additional point of attack power, you get an additional point of damage, right? It's, it's linear, it's, it's the same. Every additional one is exactly the same amount more of damage. The second one is really bad for games, and it's exponential. We really wanna stay away from this, because this is the concept that every additional point you put into a certain stat gives you more damage, right? So if, if your math is following this kind of curve, then what's going to happen is that people are just going to throw all of their stats as much as possible into one stat and forget everything else in the game because that would be the way to get the maximum damage output. And then the final one is a, is a diminishing return here, and this is what we're looking for. And because what happens here, because it, because it tapers off, 
each additional point that you add of attack power, whatever stat it may be, each one nets a less damage output than the point before it. And so what'll happen here is people will figure out that there's kind of a sweet spot that you want to get to on these different stats to, to best balance it out, right? And so that's usually leads to the best uh, strategy. Now let's take a look at, this is a very common formula in game programming. You may have seen this before, but this is a great way to get diminishing returns, uh, this formula here. So basically what it does is that you take some coefficient here, which is two, you multiply it by X, which is the input stat. So in this formula, X is the input stat, and then you add one, and you raise that to the power of one minus some value, in this case here, it's 0 0.3, we'll, we'll call it n later. And then you subtract one, this is just to move it around so that it's, it's in the right spot on the graph. And then you take that whole result and you divide it by one minus n here, which again is 0 0.3. And what I've shown here is I've shown three different graphs where you can adjust that coefficient either two times x, three times x, or four times x, where x is your incoming stat. And you can see that it creates some really nice uh, taper, which gives us a diminishing return. This is a really way, good way to do that. If you're looking to uh, build diminishing return into your game, uh, then this is a great formula you can use. Now, in addition to adjusting that coefficient in front of the X, you can also, so I've left the coefficient here the same, 3X uh, across all of them, but that value of N that I was talking about I show here how at 0 0.3, at 0 0.5, and 0 0.7, so you see it kind of tightens, it tapers off faster, right? 0 0.7 tapers off a lot faster than 0 0.3. So between these two values, the coefficient, which I call C in front of the X, and this 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, which I'm gonna call N, between these two values, you should be able, able to adjust your formula to get just the right uh, diminishing return formula for your game. But there's another there's another way to get to to get balanced stats without using diminishing returns. And this one this one confuses a lot of people math wise because you look at it and you go, no, it shouldn't work that way, but it does. People often cost call this opportunity cost and damage for you. Technically, it isn't, but but I see a lot of people in the gaming community calling it that. Um, it's actually it's just a side effect of the difference between adding percents together and multiplying percents, right? And so the order that you do them matters, right? So as you know, uh, if you add numbers together, you can swap the order around. If you're just adding, you can swap the order around and they're still the same, right? If you multiply numbers together, you can move the order around and you'll still get the same result. The problem is when you mix these two operations, you can no longer just swap them around. And so what ends up happening is, is you get a different value. So let's take a look at a formula here. This formula is actually going to be in uh, our game. We're gonna be using this formula. So we got ability damage percent, right? So each ability you use has some kind of base uh, multiplier. And then you do one plus this attack damage percent. So equipment's gonna have either uh, attack percent on it or this flat attack, right? And then we're multiplying by one plus elemental damage percent, right? So maybe you do ice damage, and so you want a matching elemental damage percent, right? And so that's also going to be on equipment pieces. And then we'll multiply it by crit damage at the end. In these formulas, I'm just assuming this isn't a crit, and so I'm just multiplying by one, right? But if it were a crit, and you had a crit damage multiplier of, say, 75, then it would be 1.75. We'd multiply the final result by 1.75 to get the crit. So let's take a look at an example here. We're gonna do it twice. And we're gonna have three pieces of equipment, okay? And so in the first example, we have three pieces of equipment and each one has a 30% attack damage buff, okay? So 30% on one equipment piece, 30% on another equipment piece, 30% on another equipment piece. And these are all just getting multiplied together. The second one, we're gonna say, okay, okay. So rather than putting all 30, 30, and 30 into attack damage, let's put 
30 and 30 into attack damage, right, to get 60% attack damage bonus, but let's go put 30 in elemental damage bonus, right? And your thought when you look at this originally is like, well, that should just be the same. We're just multiplying these things together. Why does it matter? But if you look here, you can see that what happens in, in this first line here, we take 500 and we go uh, 1 plus 0.3 plus 0.3 plus 0.3, which is just 1.9, right, a 90% attack damage bonus. And then we had no elemental damage bonus, which so is one times one, and we get 950. Okay, so when we put everything in attack, we get 950 damage. But when we take that same 30% and move it into elemental damage bonus, because of how addition works, the order of this matters, right? Whether you're adding them and multiplying or multiplying them and adding them. What ends up happening is that one plus 0.3 plus 0.3 for attack, which is 1.6, times now 1.3 for elemental damage, right? We just moved that over to the other multiplier, which you would think, well, where? why does the 30% matter where it is? But if you actually multiply this out this math, you actually get 1040 instead of 950. And the reality is that in this kind of formula where you add percentages together and then multiply them together, you're going to get the maximum damage when you even it out, okay? The maximum damage is going to come when you even it out. And so this is another way where there are not diminishing returns. Every additional 30% you put in attack gets you the exact same increase in damage. There are no diminishing returns in this formula. But yet there still is, it's still encouraging players to use a balanced mixture of stats. And so this is, this is the route we're going to go. A lot of games are doing this now. Um, instead of uh, using diminishing return formulas. Either it's fine. Sometimes you might even find that a, a mixture of both works, uh, depending on what you're going for. Now, let's go back to that diminishing return formula that I said was really popular in games. And I want to show you how you can do that in C++ in your game. So what I've done as a test is I've just gone into the uh, ODBS Hub World MMO example project, and I've just gone to this calculate combat attributes. I'm not going to leave this in here, but I threw it in here real quick. Uh, and so I've got this C, which is that coefficient in front of the X. I've got that N, which is that value that we're subtracting on the top and on the bottom. And then I've got X, which is just the incoming stat. Let's call it attack. And so I've set attack to 60. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're just going to go into Unreal Engine. We're going to run this, have it hit the break point, and, uh, and we'll see what the output is. So here we are. And I'm just going to hit play. And it should hit our breakpoint. It does. I'm going to hit F10 to go to the next line. And you can see here that it's 39.577. And if we go back to our formula and our graph, you can see that if we go over to 60x and we go up on the y-axis, it's just below 40. And so that's how it's working. So this formula here, using uh, this math power, uh, C times x plus 1.f. So these point f's are telling it, hey, I need this literal to be afloat, right? And so we're making sure that there's not any conversion back and forth between integers and floats. So we'll make sure to put point F on any of our literals. And then uh, we take that first part right there, power, and you can see there's a comma, and we raise it to the power of the second part, which is the one minus N, in this case, 0.3. And then we have parentheses around that whole first part, so it'll all get calculated together. And then we divide it by this here, this one uh, float minus n, and that gets us the result of that formula. And you can use this in a lot of places in your code to get those nice diminishing return formulas. Just play around with c and n until you get the right curve. If you have any questions related to this video, please leave your questions in the comments section. The Open World Server and Hub World MMO Discord link is in the video description if you want to discuss something in this video further. Like and subscribe to be notified of future videos and to help with the algorithm. Until next time, have a good one.